Good morning. So this morning I have a message from Our Lady, which I got yesterday, and it's about Medjugorje. What is Medjugorje, the importance of Medjugorje, and the significance of Medjugorje? So here goes. My children, today I wish to speak to you about Medjugorje, a place so very dear to my heart. Medjugorje, my children, is what you might call my spiritual headquarters on earth. Just like all organizations, such as banks, have their international headquarters, so too do I have mine. Unlike your earthly organizations, I do not choose large capital cities, nor do I choose the well-educated in the eyes of the world. I choose the poor and the lowly, and I choose unknown people and places to do my most important work. My children, I desire you to make Medjugorje known all over the church, not just as a place of pilgrimage among others, but rather as the most important and significant place of prayer in your world. Yes, my children, you will experience much opposition, as many do not believe in my presence there, while others attribute the grace of Medjugorje to demons. Nonetheless, Medjugorje is where I am, and where I have chosen to appear for these times. My little ones, fear nothing, because I am protecting you and gathering you from all over the world to Medjugorje. Pray, my children, for those Catholics who do not accept Medjugorje and who are hostile to my presence there, so that they may come to believe. Well, what to say, what a beautiful message, what a powerful message, what a factual message, what an articulate message. Our Lady certainly does not mince her words. So let's go through it. So, first of all, she says that Medjugorje is like her spiritual headquarters on earth. And so she goes on to say that places like banks, as we know, international banks, all sorts of stuff, they all have got their international headquarters, they can have their European headquarters, they have their international headquarters, and usually they pick big cities like Paris or London. Here in London there will be lots of international headquarters for different um, banks and that sort of stuff. And Our Lady is saying the same thing. That she too picks, if you like, or has her international headquarters. But Our Lady, you see, isn't um, a diva. She's not like Madonna, one of these superstars that goes around dressed in money and wants fancy houses or whatever. Our Lady picks simple places. And so she picked a very simple place in Bosnia-Herzegovina called Medjugorje. And so she appeared there and she started appearing 40 years ago, as she does, to a group of young children who weren't theologians and who were unknown in the eyes of the world. And they, of course, continue to receive messages and some of them apparitions and visions to this day. And so she chooses the poor and the lowly but she, then she goes on to say, which I find very, very important. She says, I desire you to make Medjugorje known all over the church. Now, here's the important piece. Not just as a place of pilgrimage among others, but rather as the most important and significant place of prayer in your world. So, in other words, there are lots of Marian shrines or different shrines. For example, there's Lourdes, there's Fatima, there's Garibandal, there's La Salette. There's the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We have tons, if you like, of shrines like that. But what Our Lady is saying is that Medjugorje is the most important place, her headquarters on earth for these times. And so there's something special happening there. And so that's why Our Lady desires people to come into the fullness of her plan and the fullness of the truth of what she is doing. And she goes on to say, you will experience much opposition because many do not believe in Medjugorje while others attribute it to demons. And that is true because I remember when I used to live in France and this was years before I went to Medjugorje and just recently after my conversion, to be honest with you. And I was listening and I would hear these priests especially talking about Medjugorje and basically explaining how it was the evil spirit how somehow it was Satan masquerading as Our Lady and how this had happened and that had happened and it couldn't be real and all these explanations as to why the apparitions couldn't be real. Of course, personally, at that stage in my life, I took not much notice of them because they didn't really believe what I was telling them was true either. So from, from my perspective, their, their discernment was already flawed. 
But having said that, I was privy to an awful lot of conversations and hearing an awful lot of hostility from clergy, from priests, about why Our Lady was not appearing in Medjugorje. And so that's what she says, is that there will be an awful lot of um, opposition and, as I said, and as she said there, people will attribute it to demons. People, when they like, they can come up with all sorts of wonderful explanations. They'll, it, they'll mix in a bit of demons and a bit of schizophrenia and a bit of mental illness and a bit of psychosis and another bit of demons. And they'll make this cocktail, if you like, of demons and mental illness to basically explain away what Our Lady is doing in Medjugorje and indeed what Our Lady might be doing in other places. And she says, however, my little ones, because we are her little ones, fear nothing. Fear nothing at all, because I am with you, gathering you from all over the world to Medjugorje. And then she goes on to say, Pray, my children, for those Catholics who do not accept Medjugorje and who are hostile to my presence there, so they may come to believe. So in other words, like preaching the gospel, we are to preach the gospel, we are to tell people about Medjugorje, we are to tell people about Our Lady. However, we are to expect opposition, We'd be foolish to think that everyone's going to say, wonderful, it's all wonderful, let me come with you. No, so we're to expect opposition, and when we do get opposition, especially when we get opposition for even other Catholics, Our Lady is asking us to pray for them. And let our joy and let the fruits of Medjugorje be shown and pray over time that they will soften their hearts. And what I would say is, pray that people will go. From my experience of listening to people talking about um, things, I often say to them, well, I understand um, your reservations. I can see where you're coming from. I can see why one would need to be prudent. I understand all these things. But why don't you go? Because you've heard stuff. Not everything you hear is real. Not everything you hear is true. Why don't you go to Medjugorje, experience Medjugorje, and have that wonderful experience for yourself? And when you go over there, nobody can deny the absolutely massive amount of prayer the colossal amount of confessions and any amount of people who have had massive conversion experiences and have given their whole entire lives to Jesus and to evangelization and to following the gospel and to reparation. It's undeniable, to be honest. And really, anyone that tries to attribute that to the evil spirit or something like that is really deluded, to be perfectly honest with you, and, and, and needs um, prayer and a certain amount of deliverance themselves, to be honest. So there you go. So Our Lady is reaching out in love. Our Lady wants everyone to know about Medjugorje and she wants people to experience Medjugorje. Why? Because there's something wonderful happening there. There's healing happening there. There are miracles happening there. But also her messages that she's giving there, they're very serious. And it's through Medjugorje as well that she's preparing people for these times, for what is to come as well. And she's, if you like, training up soldiers and apostles of love. So let's be encouraged, let's keep on promoting Medjugorje, praying with our hearts, doing everything with our hearts as best we can and bringing the grace, bringing the love of Medjugorje to as many people as we can. So thanks for watching, have a great day and this evening we're having our Medjugorje Adoration and Rosary for the LGBT community and people that are LGBT Catholics and people who are looking, searching. So please, if you're available, um, don't be afraid to come along. And if not, I will record it and you'll be able to find it online. So there you go. Have a great day and God bless you.